Hey guys, Lynn here, and welcome back to another Skyrim console mod video, giving you guys another quick update on five of the latest and greatest mods for Xbox One and PlayStation 4. First off, before we start, if you want to help me out, please share this video on Twitter, Facebook, or Reddit. I really appreciate the help. Anyway guys, this is actually my second video of the day. I released another non-modded video earlier that was a character build, focusing on a vampire who uses illusion magic as his main skill tree. So check it out if you're interested in some non-modded videos. This video, however, is all about mods, and we have five brand new ones to look at, three for Xbox One and two for PS4. So let's just jump straight to number one. Our first mod is a very useful one called Krasik's Alchemical Primer. A cool name. The mod author felt that the skill of alchemy was a bit left out in the cold in the game and so decided to add one simple thing to Skyrim that would help make using alchemy a bit easier. This mod adds simply a journal that can be used as a pocket reference for potions that includes only the best ingredients that are the most common and produce only the desired effect. The journal is located in Arcadia's Cauldron and Whiterun on the alchemy station. The mod simply makes using alchemy in the game much easier and more convenient for the player. Our next mod is another simple one, but one I find to be quite useful. The perk points for bounty quest mod does one thing, and that is to award the player with one perk point for the skill tree for completing radiant quests in Skyrim. The reward is only given out by certain quest givers, so from stewards and innkeepers for quests such as killing bandit leaders, forsworn leaders, dragons or giants. Not radiant quests you receive from factions such as the Companions or the College of Winterhold. The aim of the mod is to make leveling up your character a bit easier and faster. After all, not everyone has thousands of hours free to play Skyrim, but also to make the radiant quests actually worthwhile doing from these quest givers. As personally, I never do them either, but now you have an incentive to do them. Our next mod is Whiterun Manor. This adds to the game Whiterun Manor, located just outside of Whiterun. The home comes to you with no cost and there is no upgrade needed. The house is already packed full of everything a Dragonborn needs. The house is not too big, but not too small, still being larger than any vanilla player home, not modded home, but vanilla ones, and it's currently still a work in progress, so it doesn't have everything, but it does contain a lot of features. You get 25 armor displays, 26 weapon racks, two large chests, one king bed, one child bed, an anvil, armor workbench, grindstone smelter, enchanting table, alchemy table, staff workbench, and 10 weapon wall displays. It also has five display cases, one entry room, one grand dining room, a bedroom, a child bedroom, an armor display room, and one weapon display room. Overall, the house is not the best looking one I have ever seen, but it has everything you need. It's still a work in progress. The house definitely needs some more rooms. After all, it is kind of like a mansion looking on the outside, but the inside is quite small. The outside area also needs some love, but I'm excited to see where this one goes in the future, so it's definitely one I'll be looking out for. Our fourth mod adds a lore-friendly set of heavy vampire armor that comes in three variations, each with a unique effect that is applied once all four pieces are worn. The armor is made with vanilla assets, so it fits into the game seamlessly. However, it does only use vanilla assets, but it's currently not available for PS4, even though it can be, so hopefully we will see that in the future, but right now it's only available for Xbox One and PC. The set is equivalent to the ebony tier, and can be crafted with the ebony smithing perk. The hood offers much less protection than the ebony helmet, but is balanced by the other pieces having a high armor rating. Three versions of the cuirass can be crafted, each giving a unique bonus when worn in combination with the Volcahar knight boots, gauntlets, and hood. Each piece of armor can also be tempered and enchanted. So what effects does these three pieces of armor actually give you? Well, the Royal Guard Cuirass of Royal Blood gives a 15% chance to throw melee attacks into the air, draining their health by 20 points for 4 seconds. The Abyss Walker Cuirass, one with the Abyss, muffles your footsteps and allows vampires to regenerate stamina, magicka and health in sunlight, so that's very useful. And the Assassin's Cuirass, Smoke and Shadow turns you into a wisp of smoke when you sneak outside of combat, granting you invisibility. Overall, a really cool set of armor for your vampires, and personally I would like to see the armors be light armors rather than heavy ones, as sneaking is definitely a very big part of being a vampire and you don't want to have heavy armor. But other than that, this is a really super cool mod and a really good one for any vampire character, and it's definitely one of the cooler looking armors I've seen, and hopefully it comes to PS4 soon. Our final mod is a pretty big armor mod that adds to Skyrim 12 new items all of which support all races, male and female. Now I don't know about you guys, but I love a good bit of lore, and whenever a mod comes with a backstory, I like to read it. This one is a little long, so you can skip ahead a minute if you just want to see the armor stats, but the story does give me time to showcase the armors on both male and female, so it might be worth listening just to see the armors. At the end of the second era, Talos, or Tiber Septum, as he would later be called, was forging his legend and securing his place in history. At only the age of 20, this great warrior had rapidly climbed to the position of general. But that was not enough for such an ambitious man. As the years passed, he would eventually be crowned Emperor of all Tamriel. 
standing by his side from the very beginning, even before he was appointed general, were a handful of renowned and skilled Dord warriors, his personal housecarls. These fearsome soldiers would help secure every victory credited to Talos, leading his vanguard even when the man himself was conquering the war efforts from the safety of the Imperial capital. With his house Carl being a vital cog in the Imperial war machine, all of Tamriel was united under the dragon symbol. As Talos ushered in the Third Era, he commissioned some of the greatest smiths from across the New Empire to forge sets of armour worthy of its loyal housecarls. The housecarl would wear these armour sets with pride. But all of Tamriel united and no more enemy to fight, the legendary housecarl would slowly be forgotten and their great deeds lost to the pages of history. When you live under the shadow of a man like Talos, who ascended to godhood, that is only expected. In current day Skyrim, many Nords would disown the sacred imperial symbol of Akatosh embedded on the housecarl armour, but a true Nord and follower of Talos might wear it with pride. Not in support of the current weak empire, but instead wearing it to honour the great empire that Talos forged, with the help of his fellow Nords. A reminder for those Imperials they face of the Nord who created their empire and they now disown, even if only briefly, before a hammer comes crushing down on their skull. So what does the mod actually add? Well you get 12 different items, including the Housecarl Cuirass, Housecarl Boots, Gauntlets and Helmets, you also get the Housecarl Stag Helmet and Bear Helmet, you get the Shield Cape, which is a shield that you wear on your back, the Bear Cape and just a regular shield. You also get two weapons, the Housecarl Hammer and Warhammer. All items need to be crafted under the steel section and require advanced armour perks to access. Stats of the pieces of armour are based on steel plate armour, weapons are based on glass in terms of damage. All items excluding capes can be upgraded and everything can be enchanted as well. A really cool mod that's steeped in lore and I think you guys should definitely check this one. Well guys there we have it, another day and another 5 awesome brand new mods that are worth downloading. As always, like, comment and subscribe, and I will see you all later for our next video. Today's second mod video is going to be top 5 follower mods. Don't forget to keep voting for top 5s as well. Enjoy the rest of your day guys, and I will catch you all later.